Hi there, welcome to another Neon video. I have a new old sign on my bench. A friend called me up and asked if I was interested in that one. He has bought a lot of several old signs and the others were complete. This one is not. LA beer, I always thought that meant Los Angeles beer, but I think it actually meant low alcohol beer or something. The beer is not made anymore. And according to this book, the sign is from the mid 80s. That's a nice book for collectors, by the way, although it's some years old already. So I have shown you repairs of clear red tubes before, but this time we have something new because a blue tube broke. And because this tube has contained a small amount of mercury, so it's not the healthiest thing to repair. And also because the phosphor has blown off in some areas when the tube broke. I'm going to completely remake this tube and take you through that process. Um, I have a second camera now, so we should be able to get some good footage of the workshop, the fires, as well as the bending table. I've already worked over the uh, frame. It was pretty dirty. I cleaned it all off, put all new tube supports because the plastic parts of the old ones were breaking apart. This beer tube was losing the blockout paint, so I scratched it all off. You can see that the phosphor looks pretty gray on this one and it's not the brightest anymore, but it still works. I think it just has a lot of operation hours on it already. Um, I also touched up the blockout paint on these red border tubes with a brush. And the sign came to me with this um, sheet metal cover of the old transformer with a nice Anhäuser Busch embossing, but there was nothing behind it. So I thought I would keep that sheet metal for the originality and just put a new electronic transformer on the back. So the sign is basically prepared to come back together. All we have to do is make this blue LA letters tube. Here's the pattern drawing and you can see that I've put some thoughts into possible sequences of how to bend the tubes. That's not so easy. You have to figure out a sequence to make a larger part of glass without bending into yourself or bending into a corner where you can't go on. So I guess the sequence should work out and we can now go over to the glass workshop. Just a bit more background information before we go into glass bending. When I recorded the introduction to the video I thought that tube shouldn't be too hard to make, just mostly flat bending with lots of 90s. Well, it turned out it was hard to make for several reasons. First, I am still a beginner, so I messed up several bends and I almost ran out of glass towards the end. Reason 2, the original tube was 9mm glass that has become rare and I can't get it. I didn't want to use 8 for being a bit too bright, so I used 10, which makes it harder to bend this tight pattern. Next reason, I have lead-free glass, which is the modern version and more difficult to work with than the old days lead glass used in the original. Reason 4, I have this European bench torch that can't really heat such packed series of bends very precisely because the flame is always a bit bushy and not very sharp. Reason 5, they most likely used jigs to bend that original tube. I got this photo from a nice person who worked in the beer sign mass production and these are some original jigs. They are basically heat resistant blocks and molds that you use to shape and pull the hot tubes around them. This way you can do several adjacent bends at once, you have some help in complex shapes and all your finished parts will look the same. Now with this background information, let's go into bending. Alright, I'm measuring the length of glass that I need for the letter L with the blow hose. And the longer the stick of glass is, the more difficult it is to handle in the fires, so I'm not using a full stick, but just the length that I need. Now I'm bringing that length to the glass, cutting it with the hard metal knife and breaking it off. I like to flame polish my cut off ends um, so they don't cut into my silicone rubber corks and silicone adapters and also don't cut in my hands. The downside of the flame polishing is that I need to wait a few minutes after I can touch the tube again. Yes, the first one failed, 
So this is the second round, letter L. See, I also went off the initially planned sequence and did some more changes to the sequence. So I'm marking the first bend inside of the corner and one tube diameter to the left and to the right. And now I'm rolling the tube in the flame. The hotter the glass gets, the more uh, yellow flame becomes visible. That is called the sodium flare, because sodium is in that glass mixture. Making the bend, blowing it out, pushing it flat on the heat resistant cloth, and then I'm just trying to get a nice right angle by using any of the grid on the pattern. I don't necessarily need to go to the correct spot on the pattern. Just anywhere I can see if 90 degree will do. Marking the next bend. Now if I would go right in, back into the fires, heat that next bend. The first bend is still so hot that it would uh, get soft again and lose its shape. So I have to put this tube to the side and wait a bit for it to cool down and I can use that waiting time to work on another piece of glass for the project. And I have already started to make that centerpiece of the letter A with this offset bend. Now I'm marking where I have to make the drop back down to the table or to the front of the sign. I'm giving a good preheat to this bend, uh, offset bend that I previously made so it doesn't break. When I started bending I experienced that when I went into the fires with a tube that I have bent before that again and again previous bends would crack from the heat shock. So maybe I'm doing a bit much preheating and annealing now but I realize that it helps. It doesn't really happen anymore that I get stress breaks. Pushing that drop down to the table and then aligning it with the pattern. And because this is a really tight loop back and drop bend, I'm giving it some more annealing. Now I can mark the next step and that will be a raise to that crossover that connects it to the outline of the A. I put the wood block so I get the equal height for all of my raises. I have a set of American knife fires that I still need to set up and I'm very curious how working with these will be because you see on this single tip uh, bench torch you have to do a lot of rotating with your glass part and the bigger and more complex your glass part is the more difficult it becomes to rotate it to get heat from all sides to your bend. Pulled that raise up and aligned it to the right direction and height. Okay. Some more kneeling for that. Now I'm marking that edge with the 120 degree bend, but I can't do it because it would collide with the rays that I just bent. So I have to skip it 
just use the mark to see where the corner is and do that raise and offset where the electrode will be as the next step. Bending outwards, pulling up, oops, wrong orientation, and some more annealing. Now just a bit of waiting for it to cool down a bit and while I wait I go to the letter L and continue with that, preheating that first 90 degree bend that I made so it doesn't crack and then going to heat the adjacent next 90 degree bend. Pushing it flat and checking it with the pattern. And now there's another waiting time for the letter L part, so I go on with the A centerpiece and do that 120 degree edge to finish it. Another preheat for that really close raise and offset bend and the whole part. And now I'm heating that pointy edge. That is a really intricate bend. You see that part is really packed with bends and really difficult part for 10 millimeter glass. And also when I have to rotate in the flame, you see that I can't avoid meeting other bends and other parts of the, of the tube with a really hot flame. The accessibility is just difficult. Bending it in. Yeah, that bend should have required a, a, just a bit more heat to, so I could blow it out a bit more. And I'll try to rework that, heat it up again and just blow the outside out a bit more. That's a difficult task to rework because it easily happens that then you uh, blow the outside out too thin. Just trying to make it look a bit better. I could blow out a tiny bit more. Not as nice as I wanted it to be.
but I'll keep going with this part. Back on the letter L, preheating those two first bands. And then heating the next bend. Adjusting 90 degrees on the grid. And some more annealing for that whole corner. Off to bend number three. Again I had to wait to let that corner cool down because going right into the next bend would have deformed that previous bend. Now I have to skip two bends, number 7 and 8. You see what would happen if I didn't. I would collide where the red axis and even if that didn't happen, I would just collide with the next, just around the corner. So I'm just marking that bend number 7 inside. Use that mark to go around. Then I mark the inside of number 8. Also just to have some 8 go around. And then here's the number five, I think. That's the next one I can do.
Learning to coordinate your both hands like this is just in the learning curve of a neon bending too because in, in this situation now when a glass is getting soft you easily tend to uh, twist it or pull it, uh, pull it to length and that is just practice, practice, practice. Now you see I have tangled up the blow hose under the tube so if I push it down and again if I push it down I can't blow out the corner. That sometimes happens. Kneeling that last bend. Now that's the correct place for the tube right now. So I did bend number five, let it cool down a bit. And now we're marking number six. That thin sheet that I'm putting on the paper is mica. I think it's a mineral um, that it keeps the paper pattern from catching on fire when I put the hot, freshly bent tube on it. So many American shops use a wire mesh. I think it's a brass or stainless steel mesh. I have made the experience that my paper still starts to burn when I use mesh. So I switched. I saw in a Japanese video that the Japanese like to use mica, so I switched to that. The problem with mica is that it, when you put the hot glass on it, it also warps a bit and pushes your tube a bit up from the pattern. But this is the solution I have by now, so I'm using my cup and that heat resistant cloth on the table. Marking that next bend. Ninety degree bends are always well in my method are always marked in the inner edge and then one tube diameter to the left and to the right. When you have a double back or one eighty degree bend, you have to mark the outside of the bend and then one and a half tube diameters to each side. And the marks of course uh, stand for the length to be heated. This bend came out ugly, I'm not sure why. I think I might have forgotten the cork in the end of the tube, so I couldn't blow it out. Um, because I was already running low on that glass, I didn't start off again, but tried to save this bend. Just heat it up, work it out a bit more, and make sure it doesn't crack. It's not beautiful, but you can often mask minor issues, beauty issues like that, with the blockout paint. Now I'm doing the first of the skipped bends from that the roof of the letter L. So I'm centering the tube above those two skipped bends and marking them.
some preheat because the previous bends are pretty close to the next one. When two 90 degree bends are, see I burnt the paper there, when two 90 degree bends are so close um, it might be better to just do a double back, so a 180, because if you do a 90 and then another 90 you might just ending up having the same thing as a double back but not looking as nice. So as I said this 10 millimeter tube was almost too thick for that a specific pattern and those tight edges Now you're not seeing the full footage of the, the whole tube making. It took several hours to make that tube. I just cut it down to the tasks that are relevant to see how it's done. And I cut out a lot of um, putting the blowhose to the other end, cutting off a new piece of glass, turning the fires off, igniting the fires back on. Also I didn't have enough battery power and memory space on my cameras to record the full thing and who, who would watch four hours of glass bending on YouTube. This video is already the longest that I've ever made. More preheating. Now you see manipulating this tube shape as it is still solid it looks strange enough but when the, the bend gets soft and you also have to take care not to pull it off, not to twist it. And th these are the situations when you're learning to bend when you first think how the hell am I going to do that. Yes, well, the footage from the fires is missing for these last two or three bends, but we still have some footage of the workbench. Now I'm doing that second uh, skipped bend to shape the L together. Here we go. That's it.
Now as your reward for still watching the video, we're going to do the letter A in double speed. All right, letter A, marking that first bend, 120 degree in the corner. I had to wait for it to cool down, I skipped it in the video, so now I'm preheating the first bend and then going into heating the next bend. More skipping, the same situation as on the top of the L, skipping this one, skipping that one, bending this one. Now when you watch this video you might understand that repairing beer signs is not the favorite work of many neon benders. Well I do it because I do it for my collection but it's a lot of work and often people come into a neon shop they have bought a sign for a hundred dollars or euros and then the one need a tube like this remade and the shop quotes them several hundred dollars or euros because it just takes a lot of time and is a lot of work and people's uh, customers don't understand that how the repair can be three or four times the price of the what they paid for the whole sign That's why there are neon shops who refuse to repair beer signs. So in that situation you just have to go on a hunt to find that uh, tube that's broken on your sign on the internet from somebody who has the sign parted out or has the same sign with another piece broken. I'm doing the first skipped bend. I can do that already because these outer legs of the A have a larger angle than the letter L had. I can see already that this top uh, portion of the A is going to be a bit too narrow. I'm not sure how exactly that happened. Maybe just made a little mistake in marking the tube. But that'll be okay because the, the, outer, the outer legs of the A are angled anyway and nobody looking at the sign will know that. I don't have the exact angle as I had it on the pattern. Trying to rework that edge to maybe stretch it just a bit very carefully to get a better match of the pattern. But then I'll go with that.
corner cool down again. See, I tangled up the blowholes around the tube again. Now I'll bend that portion with the 45 degree short piece going out and then the rays going up to connect to the inner part of the A and I'll try to do that in one heat, the 45 degree bend outward and then the double back going into the crossover. So when I heat that portion of glass I will first pull the tube outward a bit to shape that 45 degrees and then pull over the double back to the crossover. Pulling out, pulling up. And that actually worked. Just need to reshape it a bit because the crossover dropped down a bit too far. That's it. Much annealing, I just got used to anneal my bends a lot. Now I'm doing that last bend, number 9, on the pattern. Um, and then this outline piece is finished. Now I can cut it off where I plan to put the weld with the underlying tube. Okay, you see I prepared this underlying tube, I don't have footage of that one. And now I want to weld it to the bottom of the letter L. So I'm preheating this area nicely with a hand torch. Some neon experts told me that there are phosphors that like to crack the glass in welds, especially when the phosphor has melted into the glass at the weld. As I had um, welds in the visible front area of the tube here, I only removed like a millimeter of phosphor of each end of these tubes because I still wanted it to look nice when it's illuminated. And that increases the risk of that weld breaking. See, I pushed the tubes together and I realized that I forgot to put a cork in the open end of the tube. So I quickly have to put the hand torch aside, put a cork and get the flame back to the weld before it cools down too much and cracks because now the glass is really thick and everything that is a thick bulge in a, in a weld uh, is a high risk of the glass cracking when it cools down or later in the tube life. But I was quick enough here, so I could heat it back up and work that weld out to have a nice smooth outer shape. The, the blow 
nose is connected as you see and it's in my mouth and I'm steadily working on that diameter of the weld while I work with the flame so that at least on the front side I get it flat because it will, the tube will lay flat on the table when I continue working with it but ideally get it flat all around so it's just the same diameter of the tube now I'm checking the direction if the bottom line is straight and that looked good so I'm giving it some annealing now Now let it cool down over the edge of the table so it can cool in the same rate from all sides. We are almost finished or so it seems. I'm now going to make that weld that connects the tube L and underline to the letter A. You see that I folded the pattern drawing so that I can do that weld over the edge of the table but still see a large portion of the pattern to align the letters. And when I cut off that tube from the uh, outline of the letter A you see that it broke off a bit uneven. On top there is a bit of glass missing so I hope I can push the hot weld far enough in to seal that off. And the problem happened, there is a hole in the top of the weld and because I can't lift that tube up um, to, push it, uh, to push the hole closed um, I'm trying to use a trick that a glass bender told me, he said always have a very thin tube of glass ready uh, then in such a case you can just melt a little drop of glass off of that and close the hole. Well I didn't have a thin tube ready so I just grabbed the next piece of glass that I could find and try to melt off a little drop of glass of that but I just have no experience in this kind of repair and a quick fix so you see that I kind of got stuck with the glass it cooled down too fast and too much uh, of the tube melted off and stuck to that weld so now I'm trying to get the tube off the weld again and I have a big blob of glass on the weld, that's too much, so I'm trying to heat that up again and pull off some more of it. At this point I don't know if I can save the weld, I'm just trying. Pulling some more excess glass off. And now I'll try to melt and work that blob of glass into the weld, have it flow all around so the thickness is good again. Now 
I'm speeding the video up again because this takes a moment. And it looks like that could work, but at the same time, because I had to work such a long time on that weld, a lot of phosphor melted into the glass, so I have a high risk now of it breaking when it cools down. Now I need to unfold my pattern to see the full size and check if the orientation of the weld is right, and also if the bottom of the weld is flat, so the tube can lay flat on the table. And I see that there's some rework necessary, so I have to heat up that weld again and try to work it out just a bit more. Also, you see with, uh, with my fingers, I realize that the tube has lifted off the, the table, so it's not flat at the moment. So I have to heat that weld again and try to save it and just as I bring the flame to it, it breaks off. So if this happens and if the brake, uh, the brake is clean, you can try to just weld it back together. Just get the edges soft and push it back together and work it out like a regular weld. But when I continued with the flame, the piece broke out at the bottom. So this tube was just lost. I had just had to remake that bottom line tube and move the welds a bit further to the outside of the other tubes. So I did that and guess what happened? When I was at the same spot, at the same step, just the same thing happened again. So I even had to move that weld on the leg of the letter A around the corner because I was running out of glass down there. Three weeks later. But then finally the tube was completed. Here's the successful weld on the L. And here are all the other welds on the A and that one around the corner. So that was hard. I didn't expect this project to be so hard when I started. And I still have the risk of it breaking on the processing table or in transit. Now the tube did make it through processing and through shipping and here it's back burning in. So now I'm going to show you how I dip the paint. I have this plastic box filled with water-based neon blockout paint and now I'm carefully lowering the tube just halfway into the paint with these wires that I've connected before, leveling it with my fingers. And then that paint is pretty thick so I help it drip off a bit by tilting it and then I hang it into this uh, plastic container that has a lot of holes where I can hang my wires in. Neon shops usually hang their tubes over their dipping container so that the paint dripping off goes back into the container. But I don't have that space and I don't dip that often so I just use this paper. And then, and here's the beer tube that I, where I scraped off the uh, blockout paint before that was incomplete. And I'm using those paint drips on the paper then to uh, go with a brush and do the fine adjustment on the finished tubes. Or if I have other signs that are missing just a bit of blackout paint, I use these paint drops on the paper to take the paint from there. Also tilting this one and trying to get some paint off. Then hanging it up. Oops, touched the front of the other tube there. But I can scratch that off with a knife when it started to harden.
Now this takes some hours to start curing and then I scratch the paint off the electrodes and let it run for a bit. So the heat from the tubing um, helps curing the paint. And when this uh, test run I realized just how dim the beer tube already was. And that wouldn't have looked good with a bright new LA. So I decided to use a different beer tube that I had left over from parting out a broken, I think, two bulk sign. This one is in better condition, it's a warmer white and I think the serif letters match the LA letters quite well. So I put this one into the sign and now I will put the LA tube that we made into the sign to finish it. So I have already adjusted the tube supports to the right positions and now I just have to carefully click the tube in and I'm doing that one tube support after another. Try to put as few stress as possible onto that tube. Ah, come on. Okay. No breakage. The tube can move. So now I'll turn the sign around and wire it up. Okay, shall we turn it on? Let's have a try. That looks good. Let me see if I can adjust the brightness on the camera. Yeah, well, that rolling shutter flickering is always a problem with digital cameras. They don't have a CCD sensor. All right, we're almost at the end of the video. The sign is repaired and it's back to nice working condition. And as I said, I cut out, I still cut out lots of footage. So 45 minutes is just a fraction of the time that is really necessary to, for all this work. So this was just to give you a, a look into how much time is really needed to repair a neon sign. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you like to see more Neon stuff, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, put a comment what you think about the video. I hope to see you again soon and I hope to hear from you. Bye then!